Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I, um, I wanted to do a production update. Um, because I didn't, I didn't make a clear announcement in the last video on, on what the cadence was going to be on the videos. Some people in the comments even asked, like, is this email only now this channel or are we, like, can we expect any videos from you? And yes, the idea has always been videos, but when I started Fun Fun Function, I didn't want to commit outwardly to a schedule until I already had it. So the good Monday morning thing that was actually not part of it from the beginning, even though that was in my mind. Um, but I wanted to make it one, say that once I've actually done it before I created that commitment box. And going out, the behind the scenes idea was to release the first video two weeks after uh, the big bombastic uh, video uh, was released. Um, turned out to not be realistic. Uh, and it's like a huge anxiety point, this thing, because like the dawn of the data developer video that took seven months, I think, from idea to fruition, and the idea was to make it during the weekend. Like that was literally the, like, the idea. Just do a quick video relaunch it, something like this, I guess. Uh, it's so dumb. Uh, it took that, like, it's always a mystery how that took so long. Uh, I think that scientists will study that as an example of all the tricks that can be pulled in procrastination, over-engineering, and self-deprecation in terms of uh, not giving yourself what you need to produce fast. Uh, it's just, it's just nuts. So this is a little bit of like this vulnerability video uh, showing like it is coming, but also to give you a little bit behind the scenes around this thing, uh, telling you a little bit about my uh, my production process where, because the last video was very much around where are we going to go content-wise and strategy-wise and what is that we want to achieve. And this video is a little bit more insight into the how. Because that is something that I intend to reinvent a lot with this channel. Uh, the production process of the old Funpa function was not much of an innovation. Um, it was often simple videos, I tried to make them as simple as possible and more uh, tried to just go with fun and passion and flair. Um, and there was like a lot of just work on the, on the scripts and the style, but for F3D3, as a uh, dawn of the day developer, FFFDDD. We are really, about we, the team, uh, we are really focusing on making the production process in itself a product. I'm not sure if we'll actually sell it, but we're going to think of it like that. It's going to be that sharp. And it's the main idea is to do a lot of software assisted video production. Like I want to code the videos as much as possible. And I mean literally code the videos, not coding on the videos. There's actually going to be less coding on the videos. Uh, I've been using motion canvas a lot. Uh, and that was actually ironically the only thing that flowed smoothly. Smoothly, smoothly, with the dawn of the developer, dawn, oh my god, dawn of the data developer, uh, uh, twenty dwarfs took turns doing handstands on the carpet. Twenty dwarfs took turns doing handstands on the carpet. That's from Bugsy. You should check that movie. It's great. Uh, really underrated. Um, in general, in video production, I say. Stay the fuck away from any kind of small dogs or animation. Those are the things that 
are going to delay your video production if you have them in in, in on on in frame but the animations that you see in Dawn of the Data Developer that I did, those actually only took a fraction of the entire production. And I can only attribute that entirely to motion, motion canvas. So I wanted, uh, and whenever I work in motion canvas, everything just flows. It's, it's using white, uh, which is something that I came to the scene while I was gone. Uh, and it has, it's embedded into everything, like Solid Start that I'm using for FFF.dev is incredible. Solid Start 1.0, the shape of frameworks to come. This is a pretty exciting release. It's no secret that I've been a big fan of Solid for a while. Thank you so much, Theo. Um, Theo's channel is great. It's so cool. Like I was so happy to see him come onto the scene and like uh, that he was in the comments of the release video was that was so humbling uh it, it's really cool to see things circulate um but anyway vite for the ones of you that are initiate uninitiated is a kind of build system i guess it takes all your uh assets uh, like your CSS and TypeScript and like as like, like everything and just watches that directory. It's also for used for production purposes, but uh, in this context, you can think of it that when you save, it automatically shows up. So uh, it just happens immediately. It's kind of like the shift that has happened to a large degree because we have more compute now. Like all of this is just like compiled. Um, instantly, and there's so much clever transformation. And this has allowed uh, a new class of tools that work really well. And Motion Canvas is built on this. And Motion Canvas is really interesting because you, you can, if you're a web developer, you can imagine it like a an app that creates animations, but you never deploy it. You never deploy it. You like. Running it in dev is kind of the main experience. So it's just like it's it's animation framework where you just code it out in a TypeScript JSX style thing, and the animations are on a on a canvas, but it's mainly using a flexbox for animations, and you just like add tweens on it using JavaScript generators, and it is. Once I started using it, I just fell in love. Uh, it's not a very, it's not the most popular uh, animation framework, but it is just, I just find it much more natural than any of the others. I think it's because I'm familiar with generators. <laughs> generators are uh, great, but they are difficult to wrap your head around. But once you do, man, once you do, it's like functional programming. Like this is what generators were made to do. So um, this Sunday was it? Like that was a bad day. It was one of those days where I just felt useless and it was dark. Berated myself. Had a lot of thoughts about that I did believe at the moment that I wasn't getting anything done, I wasn't getting anything out, I'm just stuck, I'm just stuck in the same loop as I was last uh, last run, uh, I'm forever cursed to be in this state, you know, like all of those things, all of those things. Uh, I want to clarify that uh, I was, I was doing programming and getting stuff done or like, rather like hunting out bugs in the solution. But I was convincing myself that I wasn't doing, doing any work. Just looking at the things I was doing, things that I was getting done, I didn't validate them. I didn't deem them as righteous 
work. If it wasn't getting the artifact out that was a video production, that was not value. And, and then I remember, like, this is what programming is about. Like, this is, this is everything I spent, I, I spent so much time talking about this on quantum function, but now I realize that since I haven't really coded something serious, in such a such a long time the positions that i've had has not been all that focused on that like being being in a coding mode for weeks you know that was so long since i was in that position so i i just like oh fuck this is how it feels when you're a new programmer then it's really important to make a video about that uh to while I'm in this pain, I guess, uh, this fear, these feelings of my to show that I feel them, I'm not invulnerable to them at all, even though I edit it out on camera, uh, but to show that you're not alone, you know, that's, that's, that's what is it, what it's about, we are not alone. This is not a video to excuse myself for it taking long. I don't, I don't excuse myself for, for making, making it right. It's going to be right. It's more about ripping your heart out and putting it on the, t eh, on the table. That's what we all need to do because otherwise we can't do good work. So the first video. I want it to be this self-efficacy monster, self-efficacy monster. Uh, if you don't want to know what self-efficacy means, it's, it's a term that a teacher friend of mine taught me. It's, it's to the degree that you believe that you can do something, to the degree that you believe that you can do something. And this, this is often missed in education this, this step because it's really hard to do, but it's extraordinarily important. And it's obvious why it's important. He said that if the student does not believe that they can do something, then they won't do it. So that's what we're going for in this. And what it is about is it's recreating a very bombastic and well-known data uh, visualization from scratch. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because it just seems like when you watch that thing as a person that is not introduced, even a d developer who's not done data visualization, it just seems very, um, very elaborate. You, like it seems magical. It seems like that's not me. It's like. It's like seeing somebody do a somersault when you don't know how to do a somersault. Uh, and we're gonna learn how to do that, all the steps, and just like, do it. Do it, break gravity. Break the, like, feel, get the feeling like, oh, okay. Like, gravity doesn't apply to me anymore had that feeling, what else is now possible? I thought that this was a fixed point in my limitations and it turned out that, ha, huh, that was just an illusion. Did that, that boundary was not there. What else is possible? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what I'm building. I'm probably gonna edit in some uh, little screen caps to hint at it, uh, it's not, it's, it's too messy to do any kind of proper demo video of it, but it, it's, we're getting there. But I mentioned in um, last week's fun fun, uh, dot email, or was it the last one before that, I don't remember, that I have lately been replacing um, software like Tana and Notion and, and Obsidian with just TypeScript and, and Vite and, and SolidJS. So I'm kind of like, instead of creating data structures and, and tables and stuff in, in that I used to do Notion, I now 
just code in TypeScript in, in, a, in a Git repo and uh, run a solid JS app with minus styling that just renders it uh, as, I, as I change things. And TypeScript is just absolutely wonderful to work with and I get version control, it's all free, uh, it's just text, so it's stored, I don't need to worry about backups or format or subscriptions, it's just like, it's just wonderful. Uh, and this is just something that I randomly started doing a couple of uh, a couple of months ago, um, and now this is the way that Funtool Function uh, scripts are written, and also how they are um, the animation is is created, and to a large degree also how it's edited. I don't do a lot of editing in in the uh, in DaVinci Resolve. And this is the same software. This like I thought that the script and the animation would be different, but it's actually merging. So the script is the main data structure. You can imagine like a TypeScript, like there's there's a TypeScript structure of sections and, and fragments of the script that reach different levels. Like as I'm working with the script, it's just like sections with vague points that then gradually are fleshed out to rough and um, final and it like yeah, it, it, it's as it's growing you know and then I get, give every section identifier once they are a cohesive point and once they have an identifier like all starts of magical things start happening when you have a data structure that can actually go through your production process. Because then I can have, like dump the entire thing into like an AI and say that, oh, it should like improve on these parts of the segment. I can ask it to what icons would be good for this thing. Uh, and when I'm assigning icons, I have a little data point that I can can refer to in the in the rendering rendering pipeline. And since motion canvas is programmatic, I don't need to go like I would do in something like After Effects uh, and like drag a thing on screen, copy paste, and, like all that stuff. Then I can just keep the script live updated and the entire thing just puts the boxes on screen places it there and it's it's there it's live rendered to canvas it's it's not even it doesn't need to render it's it's just an it's kind of like a combination of an animation and an, and an application and as i change something in the script or record new audio because motion canvas uh, handles that really well, I can just parry for that. Recording new audio is a hellscape in animation generally, but in Motion Canvas I can just, I'm not happy with this audio, and I record some new ones, and I can just adjust the padding a little bit, and it's, it's there. It's really cool. I want to make a little extra shout out slash teaser to the not sponsor of this video, but, but next um next video um it's hard to find a sponsor for the very first video that you make it has to be someone uh, like can't be anyone uh and i'm really happy that it's code crafters in particular it's it's such a cool way of of, of teaching so what code crafters essentially does is create these environments where you recreate a tool that you're using that feels impossible. They have very few courses, but a lot of languages for each course. So it's, for instance, let's say that you want to learn Rust or, or Python, um, and the frame you do it in is that you learn to build Redis 
or Git or SQLite from you build those things like you you can like how was this constructed and I find that that's such a cool and hard way of doing it. and it's so hard to do on your own you know like that's not the kind of thing that you I'm gonna do this on a Friday so you really need like that nudging and support but it's still like you build it as a fun fun function audience member you get 40% off by using the link in the episode description that's fff.dev slash codecrafters many people have uh, asked how to support the production of fun fun function and in this case it overlaps nicely with supporting yourself by getting a codecrafters membership thank you for listening uh, i hope some of that resonated um, we're all in the same boat in many ways and with that i'm going to leave you i'm gonna get to work on editing this one <laughs> uh, until next Monday morning. Stay curious.